so great to be back here in Inanuas. I graduated in 2011, and I recall uh, fondly the times I spent here. I miss my professors, I miss my mentors, I miss people who continue to inspire me till today. Um, some of them I still keep in touch, I still catch up on a regular basis. Uh, so today I've been asked to share about myself, about what, how, what, what life is like after NUS. And in particular, it's about how technology has shaped me as a person and as a budding inventor. As with any, every new chapter, you know, it's always important to remember um, where you came from, the people who helped you to become who you are, and uh, also who we want to become next. So I would like to share with you one of my greatest inspirational figures, Miley Cyrus. So, oh, well, sorry about that. Well, in all seriousness, um, I'm not a Miley fan. I don't listen to her music. But I do believe strongly in her message. Her message, I'm a female rebel, which is the theme of my talk today. Well, it's a reminder of how each of us have an opportunity right here to overcome obstacles and to help make our dreams all come true if we learn to make, to create, and to invent beautiful things with technology. One of the first, the first benefit to being a rebel is that it allows for you to stay relevant, right? Technology helps redefine how, what you are, and what you can become. In this case, the Singapore Science Center. So growing up, you know, I love, uh, I love going to the Science Center out of my own volition. Um, my friends, they would tease me a lot. Hey, Liana, why do you want to go to Science Center? It's boring. You know, it's not one of the coolest place or playground you want to hang out at, right? So. What happened was that um, Science Center approached me last year and they said to me, Liana, would you like to come on board as one of our Science Center uh, steering committee to help make Science Center relevant? Well, technology is not, an end to, uh, is not a means to an end here, but I would like to say that the Science Center is finally embracing technology to make it, to prove a point, right? It's rebelling against those people who are saying that, well, you guys are not going to be relevant. You guys are outdated. Well, you guys are not as cool as the Art Science Museum, who is getting a lot of ticket sales. Art Science Museum, how many of you have visited Art Science Museum? Whoa, that's a lot. How many of you have visited Science Center today? None, except me. Oh, maybe you. All right, we're friends. High five. <laughs> so you see, like uh, just now, I think one of the speakers as well, Dr. Bruce, mentioned uh, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. How many of you would like to visit that? Quite a few, right? It's quite cool, right? The Wright brothers and how they, they make the, you know, they revolutionize the whole transportation industry. Well, you see, I was, the reason why I was selected was because I had a vision. I wanted to make exhibitions more interactive. And I see a world where we can make, have more immersive experiences across web, mobile, and social media so that kids and also members of the public can learn all about science and technology all year round. As simple as that. So I must say, I guess, you know, maybe I'm pretty much, you know, a dorky kid back then, you know, coming here and playing with Einstein here, the famous ascot, mascot here at Science Center is still there. So. Here's the thing, buildings, right? It's very nice, you know, for buildings to stay relevant through technology, that's a very nice concept. But no one is going to have prejudice against a building if it's painted red, yellow, or it only has two stories and not three. But when we compare ourselves, like say, you know, I'm, you know because of my age, my gender, my ethnicity, my height or my social economic class and other things that just boggles my mind. You know, some people might just be just so discriminating and you know outright hostile towards me. And I just wouldn't be able to understand that. 
So I think that technology is a way for you to rebel against this negativity and stereotypes. So I have a question for you. If you, what can you do to rebel with technology? So last year, I started a company, Food Blocks. After years of researching into food, uh, food design and technology, which is a new field, uh, it's a new field within the Futures Journal, which my professor and I, after we researched, we successfully published a paper in that journal. And as a result of that, I've continued to research further and started my company, which is an R&D focus on future food technologies. And uh, the reason why I started this company is not because I want to show off. You know, I know something about 3D for 3D printing or anything like that. But because I was so curious about how we eat in modern times, of the fact that I discovered sushi is just a recent invention and during the 19th century. Can you believe that? All of us here must have had that sushi. And also, how, and, you know, how our food supplies are going to be managed in future? How many technologies or what kind of technologies are we using today? Or how many technologies you can find in your kitchen that are being used to help us prepare food? So, and then um, a little bit more about my life. In 2010, when I had an opportunity to go to Silicon Valley on an attachment program, I was the only female uh, in my class that year to be able to go on that program. It was not an easy program to get to, um, but I persevered and I got um, an, you know, an attachment to work with Skype, I'm sorry, with Quick. Um, Quick is a mobile peer-to-peer -peer video solutions company, which later got bought by Skype. And during my time there, I had many friends. Um, and I hang out a lot with, most, with my friends, and they, are, they happen to be engineers um, who are mostly guys. I recall fondly we went to you know, a road trip to Grand Canyon when I was the only female. We took a picture. Sorry, I can't show the picture because I couldn't find it. <laughs> um, and I was just wondering, where are all the female engineers? Where are all the female uh, mentors? That I'm, look I'm in Silicon Valley. I would love to meet some of them. And uh, I also took a class which I learned a great deal from, and I also learned that I learned more about the venture capital system. And I, uh, a fact that I learned is that in 2000, like since 10 years ago, the, there are 97%, 97% of all the VC's partners were male. And last year, I just checked, this number hasn't changed at all. And it's only stood still at 96%. It was also during that time I discovered that there are communities or hackers, inventors, who are doing a lot of great things, amazing things, but they're just not as famous as Mark Zuckerberg. Right? There are women, there are women who go beyond besides just being passive users of technology to go on to take on huge personal and professional risk to solve problems that they are very passionate about. So there's one lady, Elizabeth Holmes, as you see at the top left here. She revolutionized the blood testing industry. Basically, she is able to offer blood tests at a much cheaper rate. So anyone, anyone can go and have a blood test check anytime. And there was a woman who wanted to create an own, she created a, a new line of ladies intimate wear because she stumbled into upon a new material that makes, you know, your bra fit so nicely, right? And then there was a lady in our own backyard here in Singapore, founder of Hyplux, who went on with her vision to let us have renewable and sustainable water supply. So, What would happen if all these women have just listened to the doctors to say that they cannot do something, they will fail, they cannot achieve their dreams? Technology allows you to rebel, to shut down all the negativity, and to go against prejudices. A 
Richard pointed out one to help you realize about being able to rebel with technology is through some local examples. So recently, recently, uh, I was walking down Orchard Road and I stumbled upon an elderly lady. She talked on my arm and she said, would you buy some tissue paper from me? Some of you have seen that. So typically I would, I would buy, but on that occasion I would just tell her that, oh, um, I'm not gonna buy from a tissue paper from you today. But I'm gonna, um, I'm just wondering, are you free? When are you free? I would like to take you out for a meal. And I would like to introduce you to a friend who wants to ask you some questions. Of course, in the end, finally, I ended up buying a lot more tissues because it took a lot of convincing for her to come with me. <laughs> it's not easy. Take her out of the street. That's the whole point, right? So I wanted to introduce her to Vanessa here. Uh, Vanessa has just recently finished her A-levels. She just got accepted into SUTD, and she is working on um, helping the elderly gain meaningful employment through inclusive social innovation. Another woman I met is Serene Tan, through my involvement in the social innovation scene here. Um, Serene Tan's story is pretty interesting. She's helping the elderly get around easier than ever with this advanced mobility, you know, advanced mobility walkers. So if she was able, her team and her was able to take, you know, put to market an invention that is helping elderly who can't walk previously with just normal walkers, and now they have been able to walk and enjoy an active lifestyle despite, you know, being frail and not being able to walk. So you see here, technology can create new opportunities for people you never know, people you never met, but by embracing the rebel inside of you that will can not only help you grow, but also those around you. So in closing, I'd like to say, you know, it's really great to be back here again in NUS, um, the heart of technolo technology and innovation. Not only in Singapore, you know, I think it's always becomingly in Asia. And um, I think maybe some of you might end up suppressing some of the founders, the mentors that I mentioned. Or maybe some of you might end up like Miley Cyrus, I don't know, but that's still a pretty good gig, right? She makes a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but um, what I want to say is that always believe and never give up, be bold. To always fight and rebel when times are tough. When people are unfair to you, because people are going to be unfair to you, especially when you're working on something new and novel, not everyone is going to believe in your idea. But keep pushing on. So being like a rebel fighter, Miley is a rebel fighter. She was a Disney girl, and now look at her. So. I, my hope is that all of you, after you have done with NUS after school, that you would continue to perceive to, to go after your dreams and to use technology to help yourself and others around you. So here's all to my female rebel out there. Thank you.